Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look once again at that potentially major snowstorm that's going to be going on in a couple of days. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know which model do you think is going to end up being correct based off of what you see in this video. So make sure you watch it a little bit and then answer that question once we've taken a look at most of these models. Let me know in the comments down below what you think, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at this simulated radar. We're just going to jump right into things. So we're taking a look at that European model here, and as you can see on simulated radar, this actually looks very similar to yesterday, which is another thing that is a very good sign. Uh, the, obviously, the confidence should be increasing a little bit here. We're only 39 hours away. It's going to be Thursday, tomorrow, midday, when the storm is really getting underway. So we are very, very close. I'm going to make another update video for this one tomorrow, but that's about it. Then we're going to be underway with this one. Uh, there's not going to be much more to talk about. So we have some rain showers around. Obviously, it's the middle of the day in April, so it's not going to be that easy to get some snowfall. Although, by the time we move towards about 3 p.m. here on Thursday... You can see the Adirondacks, the Catskills, and the Green Mountains begin to see some snowfall mixing in for those higher elevation regions very, very early on within this storm. And that's the reason those areas are going to get the most snowfall, obviously, the mountaintops, because they're going to get that snowfall while everybody else is still getting rain. Uh, and they're going to get hours of a head start there with the snowfall. But by the time we're reaching approximately 11 p.m. here on Thursday, obviously the cooler temperatures move in with the nighttime hours. We're also seeing some colder than normal temperatures move in at the same time. All of those two things combined are going to lead towards more snowfall. As you can see, the Catskills and the Adirondacks widespread moving towards lower elevation regions now. Now the Berkshire is getting included here. Most of the Green Mountains and then a lot of those mountainous regions there in western New Hampshire as well beginning to see snowfall. We have a 999 millibar low pressure center here. Very uh, interesting situation. I would say a medium to strong low pressure center for this time of year. It's not like a major nor'easter at this point or anything, uh, but it is quite a strong storm. It's on the higher end of things for sure. By the time we're reaching about maybe 2 a.m. here on Friday, so we're moving towards Friday, uh, we see that this snowfall is just becoming more and more widespread. The heaviest snowfall there is for the Berkshires and for the Green Mountains. This was the same exact story yesterday, as you guys saw. Uh, I was talking about that all day in the morning yesterday in our video, that the Berkshires and the Green Mountains is really where I think the bullseye is going to be, and I definitely feel the same way. As we move towards about 4 a.m. here, you can see we have a 995 millibar low pressure center right off the tip of Long Island there, and that is bringing heavy snowfall there for Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and New York there as well. Let's just move this towards about 6 a.m. and you can see the snowfall becomes more and more widespread. Now we have a 992 millibar low pressure center located uh, just south of Rhode Island there and this is bringing heavy snowfall to New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. I will say that this storm as far as trends go on the models keeps getting more and more intense as time goes on. It's very interesting to watch this occur uh, and definitely taking a look at a pretty intense storm for this time of year. One of the more intense April snowstorms I can recall uh, for this region of the United States. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to finish up with this European model run. This is the one we're going to go the most in depth with. And then we're just going to take a brief look at that GFS model, the Canadian model, and then we're going to dive into the NAM model as well. And then we're going to move towards the total snowfall. That's all coming up in just a moment. by about approximately 11 a.m. there on Friday. As you can see, that snowfall is still very widespread. We have a 991 millibar low pressure center located over Rhode Island now that comes on shore there. As you can see, it, this is just a very interesting setup we have. And to the west of this low pressure center, those winds are coming from the north, and it's really just shoving that cold air straight to the south. And that's why we're seeing the snow, the snow rain line there in Connecticut reach so far south, almost to the coast there by this point. Very heavy snowfall still for the Berkshires, the Green Mountains, and then even southern New Hampshire there as well. And by the time we're reaching about 3 p.m. here on Friday, you can see that there is still a 991 millibar low pressure center, and that's located over kind of the southeastern corner there of Massachusetts, south of Boston now. Uh, we're seeing that very heavy snowfall still around for similar regions, the Berkshires and the Green Mountains, but now even um, New Hampshire and Maine, mostly near uh, Lake Winnipesaukee and just to the north of there, even uh, to the w east of there, heading over the Maine border and into the coastal regions. Very beautiful region there in Maine and New Hampshire as well, by the way. 
Uh, and as we move towards about 2 a.m., you can see this one finally moves up. We still have a 994 millibar low pressure center. So this one's kind of just sticking around, and you can tell it's lasting a lot longer than what we originally anticipated. This one is just kind of sticking in the area, and that's going to lead to more and more snowfall. By the time we reach about 11 a.m. on Saturday, you can see this one is really moving out. Maine is still seeing some snowfall, but it's going to be all said and done a few hours afterwards after that is all said and done. Let's take a look at this GFS model. This is by about 2 a.m. on Friday, and as you can see, Berkshires, Adirondacks, uh, Catskills, Green Mountains, but especially the Green Mountains and the Berkshires there seeing the heaviest snowfall looks very similar to our European model. And then by the time we're reaching about 11 a.m. there on Friday, you can see it is just offshore of Boston as a 993 millibar low pressure center, bringing a lot of that heavy snowfall for Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine there, even Connecticut. Very, very similar outlook here, increasing my confidence. Now, as we move towards the Canadian model, this is where we start to get a little bit of a decrease in my confidence. The Canadian model wants to show something a little bit different. We have a 997 millibar low pressure center south of Rhode Island here, but you can tell that rain snow line is just not as far south as the other models. It really just isn't, and it's hitting a lot later. We do see that heavier snowfall for the Berkshires, the Green Mountains, and even in through areas like Keene in New Hampshire there. Uh, but this one moves up and we see just not a lot of snow, a lot of mixing issues and just not the same outlook that we saw from the other models. So we're going to have to see if that plays out. That is keeping my confidence a tiny bit lower than if they were all just showing the same exact thing. The GFS and the European model are certainly on the same page, but that Canadian model is saying, hey, look, I don't think that's going to happen. So what we're going to do here in a moment is we're going to switch over to the NAM 3KM model, which is a very high resolution model. We're going to take a look at that simulated radar there. And we're going to see if it looks similar to the GFS in the European model or the Canadian model. Now we're starting things out, and this is approximately 7 p.m. here on Thursday, April 15th. And as you can see, we're already beginning to see some of that snowfall for the, the Catskills here, the Adirondacks, and areas in between as well. And then the Green Mountains, you can tell it's definitely high elevation based because we see a lot of rainfall anywhere that's low elevation there in Vermont and Massachusetts, only the snow in the high elevation regions. By the time we're reaching about 10 p.m., you can see it begins to get to the lower elevation reg regions here. It's beginning to get colder and colder. So the Berkshires are now included, all of the Green Mountains and even those western New Hampshire regions as well that we mentioned. By the time we reach 2 a.m. on Friday, widespread snowfall. This is no longer an elevation-based system. We're seeing snowfall everywhere. New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, all seeing moderate to heavy snowfall, especially in those almost black colors there that you can see for Connecticut uh, and New Hampshire and uh, Massachusetts. We're going to have to watch for any mixing around that area, obviously, uh, as that's the furthest south and east regions, which is going to be the most susceptible to mixing issues, maybe sleet perhaps. We'll be watching for that very closely. By the time we reach about approximately, I'd say this is about 7 a.m. there on Friday, you can still see very widespread snowfall for all of these regions still even reaching the coast. By the time we reach about maybe 11 a.m. here on Friday, same exact story. Still that very heavy snowfall going on. You can see the valleys of uh, New York there, the river valleys, are seeing rain mixing in. Uh, so that's very interesting. So that is slightly elevation-based out there in the western end of this, according to this model. You can clearly depict those uh, river valleys there. Very interesting to see that. That's why it's so useful to use a high-resolution model, because you can pick up on the little details like that that make the story so clear. Now, as we're taking a look, we're switching to a lower resolution version of the NAM because we need to move further in with this. This is at about 7 p.m. on Friday. You can see snowfall is still pretty widespread. And then it moves out towards the main coast and pretty much it's all said and done. By approximately 4 or 5 a.m. here on Saturday, it'll have moved out finally by this point. So let's go ahead and move into these total snowfall maps. First things first, our European model. The gray is anywhere from a dusting to, if anything, really. Uh, the blues is going to be about two to six inches of snow. So we can see some of that for the Catskills, the Adirondacks, and pretty much everywhere, you know, east of there uh, in, in any moderate to high elevation regions. Only the coastal regions aren't getting those amounts. Then we see six to ten in the purple regions, which is pretty widespread throughout the Green Mountains, the Berkshires, the White Mountains, and some of the surrounding hillier regions there. Then we see the pinks, and this is where it becomes pretty much exclusive for higher elevation regions. 10 to 20 inches of snow in the pink regions. That's going to be for the Green Mountains and the Berkshires especially, but there is some of that for New Hampshire and also some of that there for the Adirondacks as well. Even picking up a little bit of a teal shade there in the Green Mountains, that's where we're at about 20 inches plus, and really this model's picking up a maximum of 23 inches of snow. Take that with a grain of salt. I think that's a little high. The GFS model, the good thing here 
is that we're seeing great agreement. This looks very similar to me. And the highlight is that you can see the Green Mountains down through the Berkshires. And this one takes a little further east over the New Hampshire border there. But overall, that bullseye is in a very similar spot. And then the Canadian model. This is where things become a little bit more uncertain. You can tell these amounts are way lower. This one has, you know, 6 to 10, maybe for some higher elevation regions, but mostly just a widespread 2 to 6 inch snow event here. Uh, with some areas seeing over 6 to 10 inches if you're high elevation. So definitely the, the Canadian model saying, hold up, this is not uh, looking as major to me. That's how the Canadian model is seeing it. Let's take a look at that NAM 12KM. This is going to be our lower resolution version of the NAM, but it's so similar to the 3KM NAM that I think it tells the full story here. And as you can see, this one extends way further south here, reaching the Connecticut coast, even down to Long Island. Really interesting there. But we see those pinks widespread throughout Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Vermont. And this one has the bullseye just to the east of Keene, New Hampshire. There is a pretty mountainous region there just to the east where it gets kind of hilly there in between uh, Nashua and Keene there. Also just another beautiful region. I love New England, guys. I'm, I totally love New England so much. You guys are so lucky to live up there. But that is the bullseye region there, according to this model, in between Keene and Nashua. Uh, let's take a look at that R-Gem model. This is my favorite model, and it looks so much different than any other model here, as you can see. Uh, even lower than the normal Canadian model. So we're going to need to take this with a grain of salt. There is some models that are saying, hold on, let's, let's pump the brakes a little bit. Uh, so the confidence tab is at a 5 out of 6. I feel like I definitely can see uh, that the models are agreeing on most things, but the, the biggest thing they disagree on is how much snowfall there's actually going to be. But the location overall is pretty similar and that's why I'm at a five out of six. I would be at a six out of six if they all agreed on you know those very high amounts or very low amounts but that's just not where we're at with this one. I will be updating this tomorrow like I said and that's when we hopefully will have some final answers for what to expect. For today's comment of the day I asked you guys what do you think the maximum amount of snowfall is that we can expect and Jaco Vlog said I think there will be a max of 16 inches of snow and I think that really meets in the middle. Uh, obviously, the Canadian model says maximum of somewhere around like 12, and then the European and the GFS say more like 20. So I think 16 inches is meeting right in the middle. Uh, I definitely like that amount there. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Property Damage, John Ben Bennett, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Alan Blamo, Adam S., They're the Pan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's J, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Lego, Garys, and John Felici. If you would like to be a part of this patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Also, our channel members highlight of the day, our weather top dog, Hair Farms 1, and then also our super fan, Phoenix Nimitz. If you would like to be a part of this, you can do so by joining our channel membership, and that's going to be next to the subscribe button down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to comment to help the YouTube algorithm out. And I will see you guys in the next video.